All right, this is the presentation I gave on May 21st, 2023 for all of high school faith formation, particularly those preparing to receive confirmation in the spring of 2024. But most of the information here is relevant to uh, ninth graders will be participating in high school faith formation during the 2023-2024 school year. So let's begin. This is the overview of how we're doing youth ministry in the Concord Carlisle Catholic Collaborative. And you'll see that confirmation preparation is a small portion and it's within high school faith formation, but there's a much bigger picture of involvement here in terms of being involved in ministry and missions, which we'll define in a little bit, our peer ministers, our youth leaders, and then other additional opportunities within youth ministry. Our goals, very simply, to uh, provide opportunities for teens to uh, be Catholic Christians and to grow in their faith uh, through various opportunities and experiences. We have a vision of having teens actively involved in discipleship, having a community where teens are welcomed, and for our teens to be a missionary disciples and bringing the love of Jesus Christ, the truth of the church, into their everyday lives and into our community. That's, that's quite a vision, but it is one that we can aim for. Uh, wrapping up the current year, the 2022-2023 year of faith formation, um, taking a look specifically at high school faith formation, the aspects that we uh, covered this year in our, our uh, ministry, the invitation was uh, the kickoff, basic discipleship evangelization. Known was the series on prayer. We also did Stations of the Cross, and you can find more information about that on our high school faith formation page. And lastly, Called, uh, we used portions of the Called series. Um, called and Known in the Invitation, they're all on Formed, and you can set up an account separately on Formed. I've got some information on our website to do so. But uh, relevant to uh, this presentation, the Home Faith Reflections, Makeup Forms, when a teen has missed a session, they should go online, watch the videos themselves, and then respond to the questions on uh, the makeup form. And those are all on our website at cc-catholic.org. Uh, those series on the High School Faith Formation page have already mentioned and listed. On the Confirmation webpage are the, uh, the, the sessions particular to sacramental preparation for confirmation. That is the Decision Point program. Also on the confirmation webpage, I'll talk more in a minute about steps one, two, and three, these online forms, and then there's general information about confirmation that is relevant both to teens receiving the sacrament of confirmation in the spring of 2024, but it's also relevant information if you're planning on receiving confirmation beyond that in the future, because that type of information doesn't change much. Also want to let families know that we are actively registering for the 2023-2024 Faith Formation Year. Um, that is now open on our website. It's a multiple step process where you fill out a very simple pre-registration form. Then you'll get kicked uh, information. You'll get an email, but you'll also see information uh, when you submit the form uh, to make payment to either Holy Family or St. Irene. And when you've done that, then you'll receive uh, information about the full registration. You'll know something's not right when you've only done the pre-registration and you have not put in the names of any children or you've selected class times. That's why it's a pre-registration form. The full registration has that information that you're looking for. Um, also scheduling notes, um, in the fall of 2023, uh, National Youth Ministry speaker Paul Kim, uh, great, look up his information on, online. Uh, Paul Kim's coming to St. Michael's in Bedford on Sunday, September 17th. So look for that as we uh, begin the fall. Also to look for next fall, I've invited uh, NET Ministries, National Evangelization Teams, to come and give a retreat on uh, Thursday, November 9th. Why a Thursday? Because Friday, you probably don't have school for Veterans Day observed, at least in the uh, Concord Carlisle uh, School District. There's no school on Friday the 10th. Uh, NET, uh, also worth looking up online, um, Great uh, ministry, young adults who travel the country in a van, and they go to parishes and Catholic schools and retreat centers and just offer retreats, day-long retreats, evening retreats, weekend retreats. Um, uh, young adults, mostly teens, uh, doing a gap year between high school and college. Uh, that was my experience a couple of years ago when that came uh, to the area. Um, a lot of 18, 19-year-olds, um, but Great organization, great ministry, and I'm really excited that they're coming to our collaborative uh, next fall. 
Now, taking a look at how we're going to do high school faith formation during the 2023-2024 school year, it's going to look similar to what we've done this past year. There's the regularly scheduled weekly sessions, and I say weekly, but they're not entirely weekly because we'll take time off for vacations, and there'll be some seasonal breaks in there as well. Um, the same ministry is going to be offered at two different times on Sundays, one at each location. Sunday mornings at St. Irene's, 9.30 to 11, 4 to 5.30 at Holy Family. So one in the morning, one in the afternoon. If you can't make your regularly scheduled session because you should be assigned to one, you should come to the other if you're able to make it. Just let me know in advance. So I have the adults to support that change. My intention is to start in September. That'll depend on uh, us going to the Paul Kim event in Bedford, whether we start right after Labor Day or maybe wait a little bit later in September. Um, we are going to use a different materials throughout the year. We're again going to kick off the year focusing on discipleship, both for those preparing for confirmation as well as the, um, the ninth graders that will be joining us. And we're going to use the search, which is on form, very easy to find on a uh, formed in their menus on the homepage. And then uh, for those in 10th grade and older who are preparing for confirmation, we'll shift to using the decision point materials that I spoke about earlier. But all the materials are online, everything that we use, videos to watch, the home faith reflections, the online makeup forms, all there available. So um, I know stuff comes up. Uh, grandma has a birthday party. You have a family event. Kids get sick, right? Um, you have the option to be able to do stuff from home. Looking specifically at the uh, confirmation sacramental preparation, we're likely going to start in December or January. Uh, we may start with a prayer service, and we're, the intention is to complete all 12 sessions of Decision Point. And again, as I said, the materials are online, links to the videos, the home faith reflections. I also have online these three online forms or steps. Uh, the first step is to actually request to receive the sacrament. Just because a teen is enrolled in high school faith formation and then preparing for confirmation doesn't assume that they want to receive the sacrament. And it doesn't uh, commit them to receiving the sacrament, but it, it commits them to preparing to receive the sacrament. At the, at the later point, a teen says, you know, I'm not sure this is for me. We can have that conversation. But I'd really, really like teens who are intending to receive confirmation in the spring of 2024 to complete step one online sometime this summer by Labor Day at the latest, because my intention is to group the teens in, uh, in the 10th grade and older with other teens that are at a similar place in their faith journey. Not a judgment, just an observation that we're all at different places in our faith journey. And uh, the only way I can really do that is to have a conversation. And that comes as a result of you completing confirmation step one, talking a little bit about your faith journey and where you're at and God and prayer and church, and then, um, and then signing up to have a conversation with me. Confirmation step two, which I'd like complete in the fall or the winter, is where you provide your sponsor information. I'll talk more about sponsors in a minute. Step three is a follow-up checklist and another opportunity to speak with me. What is required to receive the sacrament of confirmation? What is the process? Uh, the church requires suitable preparation. Now, that's a really big loophole, and how we're defining it in the Concord Carlisle Catholic Collaborative is, A, you're participating in high school faith formation or attending a Catholic high school because you'd receive formation in one place or the other, and then to attend the specific confirmation sacramental preparation content. Um, it, it's expected that you're participating somehow in ministry or missions, that you uh, attend a retreat uh, for prayer to focus on your own relationship with God, and that you have some conversations with your confirmation sponsor. A confirmation sponsor is like a godparent. In fact, it could be one of your godparents from baptism. Uh, the church kind of asks that you give them a right of first refusal or that you look at your godparents first. Uh, I have a video that explains a little more information about um, choosing a confirmation sponsor. It basically goes something like this. You know, you're looking for a spiritual coach, a mentor, could be a peer, uh, often someone in your family, could be a family friend. Um, it needs to be someone who is actively practicing our Catholic Christian faith, uh, needs to be 16 or older, and someone who has received the sacraments of Baptism, confirmation, Eucharist are fully initiated in the Catholic Church. If that's your godparent, if you have a relationship with your godparent, if your godparent is someone who you'd go to with questions about the faith, 
th then go ahead and ask one of your godparents. But otherwise, if your godparent doesn't meet any of those qualifications, that's when you want to look farther afield. Or maybe you just want to look that you have someone in mind already. Um, Often, but not always, it is a custom that uh, someone takes a name from Christian or uh, the history in the Bible. Um, when someone has a significant faith experience, their uh, their name is sometimes changed. And we see that in the Bible. There's multiple examples, but it's 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 not mandatory. It's it's merely an option or a custom in our local church. Also, uh, briefly, let me talk about ministry options that uh, I'll go into more detail in a minute. But when I mean ministry, I'm talking about on-campus opportunities. You're assisting somewhere within the church. Missions tend to be those works of mercy, service. You're serving people in need. Those tend to be off-campus. Um, now, looking at the 2023-2024 school year, I also mentioned a retreat. Right now, I have something scheduled at the St. Tecla Retreat House in Barrica, January 19th and 20th. Uh, whether that date will work for everyone, I don't know. Some families might not want to do the overnight. Uh, we'll talk more about that as we get closer to it. Um, but put that date in your family calendar now. We'll do a rehearsal proximate to confirmation, and the reception of confirmation will be sometime in the spring of 2024. Um, but we don't have a date or a time, and the location is all to be determined. I've got a couple of resources. If you're looking for uh, resources to choose the name of a saint for confirmation, uh, catholic.org or Franciscan Media, good places to go to. Taking a look at ministry opportunities specifically, uh, here are some examples. We're, we're definitely looking for more altar servers. Uh, there's been a culture for a little while in some communities where altar servers have a couple of teens and a lot of young kids. We'd like really like to flip that and have a lot of teens and a couple of young kids that are kind of learning the ropes. Uh, greeters. I've talked to the, the folks who do greeting at our churches, and they would be very open and welcoming to having teens alongside them. And how cool would it be for you as a teenager to show up at Mass and have other teens greeting? Um, we're open to teens uh, doing the readings, especially during our family Masses. Uh, usually, uh, lectors, extraordinary ministers of communion, that's something that, um, you know, you wait till after confirmation, but we can make some exceptions, especially for our family Masses. We're looking for more uh, teens to be involved in our faith formation ministry of younger kids, either as co-teachers, small group leaders, leading activities. If uh, you teens ever think you want to have a career uh, working with um, younger children, this is a great opportunity to, to test that out and see if you really have some gifts. Vacation Bible School is coming up this summer of 2023, July 31st to August 4th. A great opportunity to uh, to be involved in the community. Lots and lots and lots of fun songs and games and activities and crafts and maybe one of those things interests you. We also have our collaborative youth ministry events. I don't have everything listed there, but a few of the more popular ones, the turkey truck, the uh, conquer tree lighting, a Christmas tree pickup, which is our big fundraiser, and additional opportunities that will be promoted and to be determined. Uh, in terms of missions, as I mentioned before, um, typically uh, the works of mercy, right? You know, we're serving people in need. And Pope Francis has said time and again that the importance of serving is to encounter, to encounter other people, okay? It's, it's good to do these things, and we ought to as followers of Jesus, but uh, but that relationship with the person that we're serving is is really critical, um, now, I've had a little trouble getting these opportunities going again, coming out of COVID. And what I'd really love to see is a group of adults committed to, uh, like six, six adults, for example, like committed to helping with this monthly service opportunity. What I really need are four adults. So it's two adults per van, per vehicle, right? You know, to take uh, groups of kids. Um, and if there's six adults, and they can kind of rotate, so not everybody's on every month, and you can kind of work amongst yourselves. But that way, I know I've got people I can count on um, to be able to sustain a monthly ministry. Um, and that's kind of what I'm waiting for in order to really get some of these uh, this mission opportunities started. We also have peer ministry. Anyone is welcome to apply. There's been a time in a St. Irene and Holy Family where this was only a post-confirmation opportunity, but now it's open to all high schoolers, grades 9 through 12. Uh, peer ministry is a kind of the, the leadership group where they advise uh, me in all things about youth ministry. They may have a role in high school faith formation in the future. It'd be really cool to have peer ministers helping with our, our missions, our works of mercy. Um, definitely want peer ministers involved in our confirmation retreats and other areas to be explored. Uh, teens 
involved in high school faith formation in the 22-23 year might recall the peer ministers who led our Stations of the Cross uh, prayer experience. Additional opportunities, I just mentioned the stations, uh, possibly a summer mission trip growth opportunities. There's a great conference that happens uh, called Steubenville East. Um, there might also be an opportunity for us to go to uh, NCYC, a national conference in, in November. I mentioned the net, re the net retreat in November, um, other community buildings uh, opportunities. Um, and those would be separate than the regular Sunday schedule of sessions of high school faith formation. So just stay tuned if something interests you, or if you have some ideas of what you'd like to see, I'm open to hearing them. What does it mean to grow as a disciple, right? You know, those of you in athletics and in music, you, you re realize you can't do, you can't work on all the skills at once. You kind of have to do things one at a time. And um, here are some uh, opportunities of what it means to grow as a disciple in the Concord Carlisle Catholic Collaborative. The first step is you, you just got to commit. You know, you, you've got the jersey, you're on the team from baptism, but, but are you really getting out on the field, right? That's committing to being in a relationship with Jesus and being a member of the church. The other steps kind of follow after the first one, and your next step might be different than somebody else's. You know, coming more frequently to receive sacraments, especially Eucharist and uh, reconciliation. Some families just got out of the habit with COVID and we're still working on coming back uh, to more regular mass attendance and receiving Eucharist. For some teens, their next step is just to be more active in their prayer life and maybe be more active in the small groups that are part of high school faith formation, right? You're showing up, but are you really being involved? Are you conversing? Are you talking? So um, for some teens, their next step is just getting more involved in the community and the ministry and the missions that I mentioned before. Some teens just say to me, hey, can you point me to some resources? Or, hey, I found this online. Is this legit, right? You know, you educate yourself. Or maybe you're, you're looking to be matched up with a mentor to be able to talk to somebody about how you grow in faith. That mentor might be your confirmation sponsor. Uh, some teens are ready to uh, to witness with their words, right? They're investing in the friendships that they already have and, uh, and inviting their friends to opportunities that happen in our community. My role as coordinator of youth ministry is to provide meaningful opportunities for teens to be able to invite their friends to. If you have ideas about what that might look like, I'd love to hear them. I have some of my own, hopefully to be implemented summer, fall, winter, and so forth in the future. Where do we want to go? What are we aiming for? I mean, especially for teens involved in high school faith formation, what are things going to look like by the time uh, those teens graduate high school? I'd love to have 30 teens in peer ministry. There was a time when Holy Family had that, um, but certainly um, we have less teens involved now. That's a little bit of a reach goal, combining a Concord and Carlisle, but I think in two to three years we could reach it. I know there's a lot of interest in this year's uh, those receiving confirmation in 2023 about uh, being a part of peer ministry. I'd love to see 15 teens helping with faith formation. That is a bit of a reach as well, but with the teens are out there that have gifts working with younger kids, um, doing a, a parish mission trip, a week-long service trip, that would be cool. There are other parishes in our area that send this many or more teens, uh, and our collaborative could, could sustain that in a couple of years. I'd love to see teens involved in those growth opportunities uh, that I mentioned uh, before and that we'll be promoting as they as they become available. 10 teens involved in liturgical ministry, and I don't have altar server on there, but involved in music. Maybe you have gifts in our music ministry, lecturing, hospitality, you know, th that that is very doable in the next two to three years to have 10 teens involved there. How will we know that we're bearing fruit in addition to those goals that I've identified Teens just identify with being a Catholic Christian publicly and, and maybe, you know, even to themselves, right? You know, with their individual friends. Teens are praying on their own, ideally reading the Bible, some other devotions, right? But there's some sort of regular structured prayer in the life of our teens. Teens are seeking out how to grow in knowledge, right? Participating in ministry and missions. They're involved before confirmation. Again, you don't have to wait till you receive confirmation to participate in most of the opportunities that I've talked about. A growing, thriving youth ministry looks something like this. We have regular works of mercy. We have the service trips. We have participation in the growth opportunities. But we can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. And the teens need adult leaders. Um, an old model of, of what we now call faith formation is to have adults speaking at teens. 
we're looking to do things in new ways. I need faith formation ministers. I need leaders, adult leaders, to build meaningful relationships with teens. I need adults who facilitate discussion and do a lot of listening, throwing out questions, waiting for responses. You don't have to come up with those questions on your own. That's why we have the prepared materials. And I am looking for teen mentors and peer ministers to disciple teens, possibly using scripture, other resources, but also in those other areas that I described. I'm also looking for adults to be faith formation ministers for the one-time events. I mentioned the, the group of, of adults to help with the mission opportunities, but also to help with ministry opportunities. Maybe an adult uh, can't help uh, weekly on Sundays but they can be on a list of adults that help with one-time opportunities. I really want to build up um, a group of adults that I know I can count on and call on. Um, the prayer events like the stations, of course, the confirmation rehearsal, helping with the retreats. Um, I've got adults who can't help regularly on Sundays, but could help with a confirmation retreat. I can need, in addition to uh, adult uh, leaders, uh, to be small group leaders. I need hall monitors. I could use adults to help with the creative tech, whether it's cutting this video that I'm putting together, or just making these slides more creative. Look at that, most of them are white, they're boring. I need adults who have those gifts of creativity to share them. What do I need from those adults? All faith formation ministers need the Corey background check, doing the Protecting God's Children Virtues training, and the Archdiocesan Code of Conduct. If you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me. My contact information is on our parish website. The youth ministry page has a button to link into my calendar if you want to schedule a time to meet with me. If you've already been in touch with me, my email footer has links for my calendar, my Zoom link, um, any and other ways to, uh, to be able to get in touch with me. Um, for teens and adults uh, participating in high school faith formation or anything involved in our youth ministry, uh, thank you for your support, for your prayers, for your consideration of uh, how you may be involved. And I look forward to talking with you about how you might possibly be involved. God bless you. Thank you for your time.